Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In the previous session, we have covered about Teradata introduction and its importance in current market. In this session, I will cover the Teradata architecture and also see how a query request is sent from customer to Teradata database and how an answer set is written back. To start with, there are three major modules of Teradata architecture. The first one is Passing Engine, the second one is Message Passing Layer, the third one is Access Module Processor or called as AMPS and Virtual Disk are part of it. Before we dive into each of them, I'll give a short intro about SQL. SQL or SQL is also known as Structured Query Language. It is a programming language used to interact with the database. It is a way a human can interact with database using different tools. I will cover this in a separate topic, but let's get back to the original topic Teradata architecture. Number one is Parsing Engine. This further consists of three main parts like Parser, Optimizer and Dispatcher. Let's cover them in bullet points. One point A is Parser. This checks the SQL syntax, ensure objects involved in the SQL exist in the database and does some security checks whether user got access on the tables or objects involved in the query. One point B, Optimizer. This develops the least expensive plan to return the requested answer set to the client. 1.c Dispatcher This controls the sequence of steps executed and passed to next module of message passing layer. Coming to the second point, message passing layer. This handles the communications between passing engine and amps which are also called as access module processors. Communications happening over here could be of various types like a broadcast, multicast and point to point. The main softwares involved in this module are Parallel Database Extensions PDE and Binets. And finally the third topic Access Module Processor. This is also called as AMPS like I have mentioned before. It is responsible to store and retrieve data to and from the disk or virtual disk. They are also responsible for sorting rows, join processing, aggregating the columns and output conversions etc. This is one of the main part of Teradata architecture and a lot of system level optimization is possible in this area. Parallelism is the foundation for Teradata. Each and every part of Teradata is built to function in that way. Let's get this theory into a practical situation. Consider I got a database as HR and a table name as employee and I am trying to query from my ID Sai. I want to insert a new employee with name Jack and his employee ID as 11. I have used an insert query to perform this task using SQL Assistant tool. We'll cover more about this tool in the next topics. So once this query is been executed in the tool, you can see the records being passed through Parsing Engine where Parser first checks the insert query syntax and understands it, validates it whether my ID got insert access on HR database and employee table. Next. Optimizer prepares a plan and Dispatcher passes this plan to message passing layer. This message passing layer communicates between the passing engine and amps like I mentioned before. Finally, the records get assigned to an amp using hashing algorithm that ultimately places this record into a virtual disk under each specific amp. In the previous slide, we saw how a record was inserted and acknowledgement was received to the client. In this current one, we will validate 
if the inserted record jack exist in the table to start with i will run a select query on the hr.employ table where hr is the database specifying a where condition value jack once this query is executed on client side this is first passed through the parsing engine where same set of steps are performed starting with syntax check understanding the query and jack value which is passed through the where class this is where hashing takes place after that optimizer prepares a plan and dispatcher passes them to message passing layer this mpl again communicates between passing engine and amps finally jack jack records location is identified on the storage layer of amp and reverted back to client or the one who has triggered the query sai through the same path you would have noticed i have used a keyword hashing algorithm while explaining about insert row in the amps module now what is hashing algorithm before that what is hash let's first learn all those terminologies and later explore it practically hash in computer field is to transform given string or value into a complex code through some formulas what is hashing algorithm then hashing algorithm is used to hash or transform the primary index value in our case jack and return a 32 bit number for it which is called row hash the higher order bits of the row hash that is first 16 bits are used to identify the hash map entry next what is hash bucket number a hash bucket number is part of row hash which helps in identifying an amp location for a value what is hash map hash map is an array of buckets that contain specific amp number it is a mechanism to determine which amp a row is stored on using the hash bucket number amp uses the 32 bit row hash to allocate the rows within its disk it adds a uniqueness id 32 bit number if there is any record with same row hash this combination of row hash and uniqueness id is row id all records in amps are stored using these row ids although i will cover rdbms as a separate topic i will give a small intro about what is a table and a primary index a table is a two dimensional representation of data via rows and columns in teradata a primary index is compulsory for a table although there are some tables created with no primary index as well but we will explore that in later scenarios so this primary index is used to distribute the rows across amp using above hashing algorithm so combining all the theories previously mentioned the diagram sums up as follows you could see here value jack is hashed through some complex formulas that's been mentioned as hashing algorithm generating a value triple zero eight two a nine one this 32 bit value is called row hash picking the first five digits which is triple zero eight two is called hash bucket number this hash bucket number is present in a matrix or a table like structure called hash map using this hash bucket number and hash map combination we are able to reach the final module amp number 17 hence value jack is stored under amp 17 using this hashing method now each amp will further add 32 bit uniqueness id to uniquely identify a row and differentiate other rows which are hashed with same value now we know how primary index value jack has traveled from client system which is under size id through different modules and reach final storage layer on amp 
number 17 these hash maps hash bucket numbers are generated based on the teradata system configuration that varies for each customer as the amps count and node counts varies as per their requirement it's not compulsory that every user will get the same value at their end you can try executing the above query using SQL Assistant or any other tool and learn how the primary index value behaves on your system. You need not take the same jack value but you can choose any integer or any combination of strings or any integers. If it's a composite primary index then you can group both values together and try to hash them. In the next session I will be covering how to download and deploy Teradata Vantage on your local system. This way you can test all the queries as well as future practical stuff at your local systems itself. So stay tuned and enjoy your day.